More in our 2020 lead, Democratic candidates today flooding a New York conference room for a chance to stand out to a key Democratic demographic. Some 12 of 17 2020 hopefuls made it a priority to stop at the Reverend Al Sharpton's National Action Network annual convention, a gathering of black leaders and black voters all listening closely for how these candidates would look out for them if elected. As CNN's MJ Lee now reports, the candidates are well aware black voters were crucial to Hillary Clinton winning the nomination in 2016 and Barack Obama in 2008 and 2008. No justice. No justice. A string of 2020 presidential candidates today courting a key Democratic voting bloc. I will not back down. Making their case at the National Action Network conference to the African American community, a powerful constituency crucial to the outcome of a Democratic primary. Just today, seven presidential hopefuls addressing the crowd, following five others earlier in the week, all focused on key issues like racial inequality and criminal justice reform. Let's talk about what justice looks like. It looks like leaders having the courage to understand we need reasonable gun safety laws in this country, including universal background checks and a renewal of the assault weapons ban. The boldest policies we're talking about right now can't just be about sentiment or about acknowledging pa the past. They need to be about actually balancing the economic scales and confronting the bias that persists right now in the present. Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren, for the first time, calling for eliminating the Senate filibuster, saying the tradition has been used to block racial progress. For generations, the filibuster was used as a tool to block progress on racial justice. And in the recent years, it's been used by the far right as a tool to block progress on everything. We should get rid of the filibuster. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders rallying the audience by slamming President Trump. It gives me no pleasure to tell you that we have a president today who is a racist, who is a sexist, who is a homophobe, who is a xenophobe, and who is a religious bigot. South Bend Mayor Pete Buttigieg forced to explain his controversial comments from the past that all lives matter. What I did not understand at that time was that that phrase, just early into mid, especially 2015, was coming to be viewed as a sort of counter slogan to Black Lives Matter. Since learning about how that phrase was being used to push back on that activism, I've stopped using it in that context. Host Al Sharpton asking every candidate whether they would sign a bill that would create a commission to study the issue of reparations. The overwhelming response from the 2020 contenders? Yes. 100%, of course. I support Congresswoman Jackson Lee's H.R. 40. Yes, I would. I already support that bill. Go H.R. 40. And I will sign that bill. <laughs> yes, I'm going to pass this. Come on now. The conference, an important campaign stop for Democrats hoping to court African Americans, who make up about 20% of Democratic voters. And give their recall. Now, this conference is just one more reminder that all of the Democratic candidates are trying President everything that they can to try to set themselves apart in, in a field that is growing and is giant. Jake. All right, MJ Lee, thanks so much. Uh, CNN exit poll showed 89% of the black vote went to Hillary Clinton in 2016. Uh, in 2012, 93 percent of the black vote went to the black candidate, uh, Barack Obama, the incumbent president. The, this voting democratic demographic is, is almost certainly going to go overwhelmingly uh, for the Democrat, especially with President Trump in office. But I guess the question is turnout. Yes, turnout is the key question. And yeah. in 2016, I know a lot of folks talk about these disaffected working class voters. When people talk about white working class voters that defected to Donald Trump. And they're really talking about 8% 8 per, 8 of the electorate in 2016, which were Obama-Trump voters. But what, what the untold story, I think, is that black voters did not come out in the numbers that they needed in places like Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. 100,000 votes was the difference between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton being president. Democrats understand that this time around. But more so, the person that can capture the hearts and minds of black voters is the person, in my opinion, that will be the Democratic nominee. And so lots of these folks are in the fight for their lives, and that's why the National Action Network Conference um, and showing up in places like South Carolina, but also the Quad Cities in Iowa, going to Wayne County, um, where Detroit sits in Michigan, are really important, going on a Southern tour like Elizabeth Warren has done. So I'm excited that folks are really fighting for the black vote, Jake, because black voters are not just going to turn up and turn out for anybody. They are right. waiting to see. No, it's interesting because this is the most diverse uh, field uh, ever. Uh, two of the candidates are black, at least uh, one is Latino, one is Asian American. 
But even with all of this, and with a lot of candidates, as you saw there, um, I think pandering is a fine word to use in this context, mm -hmm. just uh, agreeing to, to what the crowd wanted, uh, none of them got the biggest welcome and the biggest applause at the convention. Take a, take a look at who did. Than the people, Sister Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. Yes, yeah, so that's right. It's the hometown crowd for Congresswoman Ocasio Cortez. Um, but does it also push to the popularity of the policies and and her fighting spirit? You know, I think her, her policies certainly have a following in the Democratic base. That's true. We've seen that with the Green New Deal. But I also think as a personality and as a person who has charisma and is bringing excitement back to Democratic politics, that's something that should be welcomed in the party, whether you agree with her policies or not. And I often think that's what's being reflected when you see excitement in these rooms. She's become kind of a, a representative of accessibility to government and to politics, which is ultimately a good thing. And I think I'm, AOC should just run for president. Unfortunately, now, we can't. She's Why 20, not? She's, she's 29. 29. Who would have? I was thinking about this. Who would have standing <laughs> to challenge her? She just says, "I am 35 years old." <laughs> well, by some definition of I years. Have birth I, I'm, I'm serious about this. Well, who is some court going to throw her off the ballot? I, I, I doubt it. So I, 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 I want to say she I'm wasn't, for AOC. She, I am sure you are, but <laughs> she was in her hometown crowd. I will say that I don't think she could win in 90% plus districts in the country, and we have to be mindful of that, too. The Trump war room tw tweeted out, anti-Semite Al Sharpton called Jews diamond merchants and organized a march where protesters shouted, kill the Jews, but Democrats running for president will make time to speak at his convention today. Uh, obviously trying to rain on the parade. Uh, is that effective, do you think, with any, any percentage of the electorate? Yeah, I think there's a lot of Republicans that look at... Um, Al Sharpton and remember his role in the race riots in Brooklyn in the early 90s is something that gets discussed frequently in conservative media whenever he's brought up. And, you know, he's sad that he's regretted the role that he played. But, you know, it, it does strike me funny that so many presidential candidates will go to a convention organized by someone that did play a role in a real race riot. I will just say, Reverend Sharpton has showed up for communities time after time after time again. He is not an anti-Semite. And any suggestion of that, I think this just goes to show that the Trump war room really doesn't have real things to go on and talk about. So they are just grasping for straws here. Democrats going to go where they're going to go, and they needed to be at NAND today.